Hey, it's Andy Sylvester. I'm editor of City AM. This is Frank Galloway, sports editor at City AM. We're going to wrap through the three things that have been taking most of our attention in the sports pages this week. A week started with protests at Goodison over the Premier League. Fallout continues from that 10-point deduction. Yeah, it has. This is a story that's just not really going away. Um, Everton is still very upset about the fact that they're getting 10-point deduction for breaching financial rules. Um, to the point where you even had Everton season ticket holder and Mayor of Manchester, Andy Burnham, write to the Premier League to protest at the injustice of it all. Um, and the Premier League this week wrote back um, to inform him that actually there hadn't been an abuse of process, as he yeah. suggested, and to try and walk him through basically how they arrived at that 10-point uh, that penalty. Will that be the end of it? Uh, probably not. And it's all going to come down to whether Man City and Chelsea get turned over as well at some point, isn't it? Because... That will be if they somehow avoid points deductions once they've gone through the same process. Almost regardless of the evidence, football being football, people are going to ask questions, aren't they? They will. I just suspect that in both of those cases, we're so far away from actually getting the answer to what the punishment is going to be that Everton will hopefully have uh, made their peace with it. Yeah. Um, switching codes, story that broke uh, Thursday, I think it was. Um, England captain, still England rugby captain, I think, Owen Farrell taking a break from international rugby, missing the Six Nations. Kind of a big deal that mental health... I suppose we've seen a little bit of it in cricket, haven't we, with players not going on certain tours to get some respite, and you understand that with the cricket calendar. Um, you know, what's the series in the West Indies, really? We do enough of those, or you know, a one-day series in Sri Lanka. You can kind of see where people are saying, oh, I need a break, and it's not the biggest thing in the world. For England's captain to miss the Six Nations... It shows, I guess, how far sport is going in the way it thinks about mental health. Yeah, I think so. And I think also, I mean, you mentioned cricket. You know, Ben Stokes mm. would be a great example there. He took a, a period of time yeah. out, of, out of cricket altogether for, for sort of mental health reasons. So I think that was a big precedent, really, in terms of, you know, somebody of that stature saying, I need some time away, yeah. and the only thing that's going to sort this is if I actually just take some time off. Mm. OK, Owen Farrell's still going to play club rugby, um, but that's still going to be less of a burden, and you can understand why, you know, than playing for England as well. So yeah. I think because we are at the start of a new World Cup cycle, it's probably, you know, a good one to miss, yeah. if you like. Also, uh, there's going to be other high-profile players not playing, like Antoine Dupont, mm. who's signed up for the, the Sevens yeah. programme yeah. so he can play the Olympics. So... Yeah, the Six Nations is going to have a slightly different feel next year, I think, without some of these these big players. But yeah, Farrell taking time out is a, a big, a big statement and a big uh, sign of where we've got to with mental health. Yeah, and of course, I mean, I was I went to a few of the World Cup games, lucky enough to go over to France, and you know there were points where Farrell, whose selection was a contentious one, I think, despite being a captain, despite the points records, despite all of that, you know, he was occasionally getting booed in the kind of mm. intros by England fans and. Mm. I don't know, maybe that's a question about fandom and sports. Um, speaking of fandom, one thing that uh, businesses love to do, especially businesses recently in the crypto space, is is jump into bed with sports people. It tends to be pretty lucrative for the sports people as well, unless, of course, that industry then starts to find itself dragged into the court. Yeah. So good times to talk, I suppose, about Cristiano Ronaldo and Binance. Yeah, indeed. Yeah, it just uh, emerged this week that uh, Ronaldo is facing a, a $1 billion lawsuit, class action lawsuit being brought against him in the state of Florida. Mm. Um, over his promotion of, of Binance. Um, he's sort of a, a, an ambassador for them and also has his own range of NFTs on the on the platform. And as you say, I mean, he's by no means unique in mm. that respect. Um, there's been plenty of footballers and football teams promoting various different uh, crypto and digital yeah. assets. Um, and some of them have had quite a lot of flack for it, which, you know, you can, you can understand. Um, what's interesting with this one is... Uh, Obviously, the size of the, the settlement <laughs> yeah. they're seeking um, is Ronaldo going to going to sort of seek to settle it out of court? Mm. That's one option, um, or is he going to you know appear before a trial? Yeah, you would think he wouldn't want probably to probably avoid that. that if he could. Yeah, yeah. Um, something that somebody mentioned. Um, we've got a piece coming up about this on the on, on the site this weekend, um, but there is a precedent uh, that's that's related, which is Kim Kardashian. Mm. Um, had to settle out of court uh, over a similar claim. She was promoting a, a cryptocurrency. She didn't, I believe, I'm right in saying, she didn't let on that she was being paid. And mm. I think that's obviously quite a big deal. I think yeah. with Ronaldo, it's possibly different in that he just didn't let on how much he was being paid. <laughs> um, so, you know, it's it's not quite the same, but it but it will be an interesting one to watch. 
Yeah, it is an interesting one to watch, and I'll tell you if um, what I find staggering in all of these, the number of advisors that are around these top sports people. I just I can't imagine there shouldn't be better due diligence around this in case mm. something like what's happened to Binance happens. But hey, there's probably money to be made there at some point by some smart people. Sounds like a business idea. Sounds like a business idea. Cool. Um, okay, before we wrap up, I've got a question for you. Oh yeah, I saw you. You're all scribbling away over in the corner. Well, this is a question that's been been put to me by a colleague, and he very much enjoyed putting me on the spot. So I'm going to put you on the spot now. Oh, no. Um, can you tell me the Four players to reach 10 Champions League goals before turning 21. 21. And three four. of them really are gimmies. They are players playing now, three of the biggest stars in world football, arguably the three biggest, three biggest stars in world football. As you know, I could tell you League Two top scorers uh, very easily, but I'm not being asked that. Um, Jude Bellingham, I'm assuming, would be one. Dortmund and Madrid. ka -ching. Players playing now, young players, banging them in. Um... Oh, was, oh, was Fat Ronaldo there? Think more current. Uh, Think more Parisian. Oh, Kylian Mbappe, obviously. So that'd be two. Um, Norwegian meat shield. <laughs> Erling Haaland. So who's the fourth? Who's the, the fourth, and the fourth is the not fourth, playing. The, the tricky, the tricky one is what well, he is playing, sort of. Uh, Karim Benzema. Oh, that, is, that is a tricky one. But uh, props to Emmanuel for. For, for That's a good question. It's a bit of trivia, yeah. Good question. With my knowledge of Champions League football exposed, uh, let us know what we should be covering next week. Drop in the comments below what are the biggest stories for you this week and next.